Hello everyone, I'm Matthias, co-founder of MeteorBlue and main developer of our forecast system. Today I want to quickly explain how Flight Simulator knows about the weather and how we actually create a forecast. Basically, we start by dividing the Earth in a number of small boxes. For every box, we need to define the weather. And we do this by storing temperature, wind speed, humidity, pressure, rain, snow, and pretty much everything that defines the weather. So now that we have stored that, we can have different weather in every single box. Obviously, for flying, we are not just interested in the weather at the surface, but also at higher altitudes. The way we solve that is by adding one more layer on top of that one, then another one, and another one, all the way up to the stratosphere. To provide such global weather data, Microsoft found the perfect partner in Swiss company Medio Blue. Medio Blue is a specialist weather company, producing, managing, and supplying high precision weather and environmental data for the entire Earth. Using observation data, high resolution numerical weather predictions, and immense archives of historical data. Medio Blue was founded in 2006 as a spin off from the University of Basel, Switzerland. Since then, it has grown from a two person startup into a company with customers in more than 50 countries. Medio Blue has pioneered technology breakthroughs from its inception, as CEO Karl Guprot explains. Innovation is our DNA since the beginning, and this is expressed in some of the step changes made by Meteor Blue in the weather business. One was this two kilometer weather model covering all Central Europe on an operational basis. We then followed with several high resolution models for Africa and South America with 10 to 18 kilometer resolution unique at the time. And 2013, we were the first private company to run a global weather model seven days ahead with hourly intervals. The Medio Blue website has pioneered many visualization forms, such as mediograms with vertical cloud structures, multi-model forecasting, and graphics to compare all major weather models. Several generations of wind particle simulations with first versions starting in 2003. Easy and clean access to all the METAR and TAF information for flight preparation. And starting this year, the first vector-based interactive weather maps, providing a proper scientific visualization of weather data on the web. Flight Simulator is a project where there was virtually no limit on how much data we can provide. So we decided to have globally 250 million of these boxes. So now Flight Simulator knows about the weather, not just at the airport, but everywhere. Especially for the clouds, we added 60 vertical layers on top of each other, which then allows us to create this incredible amount of detail we see in the simulator. But how does the forecasting work? Well, Let's do a simple experiment. I have a battery, which I place on this small slope. And if I let it go, it will roll down and eventually stop. Now, the question is, why is it doing that? Well, basically, we have two forces acting on it. At the beginning, it's gravity that accelerates it. And then we have friction of the table that slows it down. So if we know the forces acting on the battery, we can put those into mathematical equations and create a system of equations that's predicting the time evolution of this battery so we know where it will be 30 seconds from now. With weather forecasting, the process is pretty much the same. The only difference is we have more variables and the equations are much more difficult. Now there's another important point to note here. The end result of our simulation is very much dependent on where we start. This starting point is called initial conditions. And we find these initial conditions 
by taking measurements. So these are ground stations, satellites, or even airplanes. Now, when we measure the initial conditions, we cannot do that with infinite accuracy. So we could say we measure the starting position accurate to one centimeter, and then we let those go. We see both go to the right, which could be sunny weather. However, this small inaccuracy of one centimeter could lead to very different results in some situations. And this is why sometimes the weather forecast is very accurate and sometimes it's not very accurate. Well, the way to figure out if it's going to be accurate or not is doing this. So we compute many, many forecasts and see how much they diverge or if they all go at the same place. Now, the real benefit of having all those models accessible is the possibility to combine them into one single forecast that is much more accurate. This is a real big data problem. Over the past years, we developed our own specific machine learning methods to solve the problem of finding this best combination. And it is this forecast we then publish on the website or sell to our customers. When we started working on the flight simulator project about two years ago, we were thinking about including forecasts for airports and maybe some upper level winds so that pilots can fly in the jet stream. But then the project grew so quickly and could ingest more and more data that now the weather looks almost like real. So in the current version, we included the full 3D icing risk data derived from cloud microphysics. This is a variable we weren't even thinking about in the beginning. The partnership with Microsoft has been really exciting for Meteor Blue, as the innovation simply never stops. As you can imagine, here at Meteor Blue, we work a lot with code, maps, diagrams, but with Flight Simulator, even for us, it's the first time we can really experience the data we compute.